Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video I'm going to tell you about a recent study that has literally just come out that has shown real-time communication with lucid dreamers. So for the majority of times when we dream, we fail to realise that any of our experiences is merely a dream. On the other hand, someone who is lucid dreaming are able to be aware that they are asleep and dreaming. But understanding lucid dreams, and well, understanding dreams in general, has always been a very difficult thing to do mainly due to the fact that, well, you're asleep. And so dream reports that are given from the dreamer after waking are used instead. However, these can be distorted or fragmented due to generally a poor ability to recollect what exactly happens during a dream. So to circumvent this ambiguity, the best way is to actually get a real-time measurement of what's happening during that lucid dream state. Well, that's exactly what the researchers behind this paper were trying to do. And guess what? They achieved it. So how did they achieve it? Well, firstly, they needed to find lucid dreamers. And so lucid dreaming is a notoriously rare phenomenon and can rarely be summoned at will. I mean, I've even tried myself and I failed. So if anyone's got any tips, please do let me know. (laughs) And so that's one difficulty the researchers faced. But they were able to find lucid dreamers and they split them into three different categories. Experienced lucid dreamers, healthy people with minimal prior experience who were trained to lucid dream. And then thirdly, they had one patient with narcolepsy and that is a neurological disorder characterised by frequent lucid dreaming. But I suppose the more interesting question is how were they able to do this communication process and what were the data results? Well, several different methods were used and it was also validated by having independent scientific teams in France, Germany, the Netherlands and the USA. However, in each case, sensory stimulation was used to convey questions to the dreaming participants. And training was given to the participants prior to sleep with the same type of sensory stimulation that was used during the sleep, with the important point that the participants didn't know what specific questions would be presented to them during sleep, so that the communication subsequently undertaken during the sleep was always novel. And the other form of training that the participants required was training such that they could communicate back to the experimenter what their answer was. And the way that they did this was using physiological signals based on facial or eye movements. Now, I'm not sure how much this is making sense. So the best thing to do is actually show you some data. So the first example they give is a 19 year old American participant who had previously experienced only two lucid dreams. And so during this 90 minute nap that he was undertaking, At the beginning of entering REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement, they presented him with a spoken math question, 8 minus 6. Within three seconds, he responded with two left-right eye movements. As I explained previously, they were trained to respond and communicate back to the experimenter with either facial movements or with eye movements. And so as you can see in this figure, the two left-right eye movements happened shortly after the question 8 minus 6 was asked. So the participant gave the correct answer in response to the question. And as you can see, the experimenters actually asked this question twice and both times they got the correct response. But the interesting thing is what the patient recollected on awakening. When the experimenter asked whether he remembered hearing any of the math problems, how many he answered and what he answered, the subject reported, I think I heard three problems. I answered two for all of them, but I don't remember what the first one was. I just remember the last one was eight minus six. So the idea is that in this study, they've been combining both this communication in real time with the dream reports to have two modes of validation. The second example that I want to show you is with a 35 year old German participant who was an experienced lucid dreamer. This time, however, he was presented visual stimuli consisting of alternating colors and corresponding to a Morse coded math problem, four minus zero. As you can see here, the participant produced the correct answer for using again this left right eye movement. The interesting thing with the dream report from this participant is how he received the signal. The participant had this to say, I was alone in the room when the light started flickering. I recognised this as the flashing signal from the outside and reported the answer for with eye signals. Now these are just two examples of successful two-way communication attempts given by the experimenters with the lucid dreamers. As you can see in this table here, 18.4% of the times did they get the correct response when signal verified lucid dreaming was occurring and the communication was attempted. 
Majority of the times, there wasn't a response or the response was ambiguous and the remainder were incorrect responses. Now, obviously there's still a lot of work to be done to investigate this further, but from the examples provided, it can be seen that there's some evidence that advanced cognitive abilities can be engaged in dreams, such as the ability to do these mathematical calculations. Secondly, it shows how meaning can be delivered during sleep and can actually influence dream content. And this idea has been famously portrayed in Christopher Nolan's film Inception, which is, I have to say, one of my favourite films. Anyway, I want to conclude with what the authors say at the end of this paper, that with the advent of interactive dreaming, which is their new approach demonstrated in this paper of communication between experimenters and dreamers, has new opportunities for gaining real-time information about dreaming and for modifying the course of a dream. This could usher in a new era of investigations into sleep and into the enigmatic cognitive dimensions of sleep. Now that's pretty cool. So I hope you've learned something in this video. I want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters and thanks for listening.